Sri Aurobindo on A.E. He writes, I do not think I have been unduly enthusiastic over Yeats, but one must recognize his great artistry in language and verse, in which he is far superior to A.E., just as A.E. as a man and a seer was far superior to Yeats. Yeats never got beyond a beautiful midworld of the vital Antariksha. He has not penetrated beyond to the spiritual mental heights as A.E. did. But all the same, when one speaks of poetry, it is the poetical element to which one must give the most importance. What Yeats expressed, he expressed with great poetical beauty, perfection, and power. And he has, besides, a creative imagination. A.E. had an unequal profundity of vision and power and range in the spiritual and psychic field. A.E.'s thought and way of seeing and saying things is much more sympathetic to me than Yeats, who only touches a brilliant floating skirt edge of the truth of things. But I cannot allow that to influence me when I have to judge the poetic side of their respective achievements. The depths of A.E. are greater than those of Yeats, assuredly. His suggestiveness must therefore be profounder. A.E. is not a great rhythmist. He is too preoccupied with his vision, more of a truth seer than a truth hearer of the spirit. But when the hearing comes, the shruti, somehow or other, without any expenditure of device, the full spiritual intonation rises up and takes possession of the music. To give one instance only, like winds and waters were her ways, they heed not immemorial cries, they move to their high destinies beyond the little voice that prays. Most of these quotations from Sri Aurobindo are from the future poetry. And I so highly recommend that poets and lovers of poetry enter into this great work. Even though many parts are beyond me, such as the long article on quantitative meter, still I am moved by so many chapters of the future poetry. Sri Aurobindo continues, the poetry of A.E. is still more remarkable. What the others suggest or give us in more or less luminous glimpses, he casts into concentrated expression from a nearer spiritual knowledge as when he strikes out in a brief verse the living spiritual perception of the universal and infinite source of love. We bade adieu to love the old. We heard another lover then, whose forms are myriad and untold, sigh to us from the hearts of men. Sri Aurobindo continues, He lives on the spiritual plane 
to which so much of this poetry is an indistinct or a less distinct aspiration, and his whole self-expression is bathed, perhaps rendered, sometimes a little remote and unseizable by its emergence, in an unusual light, the light of the spirit breaking through the veils of the intelligence in which it has to find its means of speech. Sri Aurobindo writes about the latest trend in English poetry. The latest craze in England is either for intellectual quintessence or sensations of life, while any emotional and ideal element in poetry is considered a deadly sin. But beautiful poetry remains beautiful poetry, even if it is not in the current style. And after all, Yeats and A.E. are still there, in spite of this new fashion of the last one or two decades. Today, we begin with A.E.'s poems. The first one, Frolic. The children were shouting together and racing along the sands, a glimmer of dancing shadows, a dove-like flutter of hands. The stars were shouting in heaven, the sun was chasing the moon. The game was the same as the children's, they danced to the self-same tune. The whole of the world was merry, one joy from the vale to the height, where the blue woods of twilight encircled the lovely lawns of the light. The next poem, The City. A visionary poem. What domination of what darkness dies this hour, and through what new Rejoicing, winged, ethereal power. O'erthrown, the cells opened, the heart released from fear. Gay twilight and grave twilight pass. The stars appear, or the prodigious, smoldering, dusky city flare. The hanging gardens of Babylon were not more fair than these blue flickering glades where childhood in its glee re-echoes with fresh voice the heaven-lit ecstasy. Yon girl whirls like an eastern dervish. Her dance is no less a god-intoxicated dance than his. Though all unknowing the arcane fire that lights her feet what motions of what starry tribes her limbs repeat. I, too, fire-smitten, cannot linger. I know there lies, open somewhere this hour, a gate to paradise. Its blazing battlements with watchers thronged. Oh, where? I know not, but my flame-winged feet shall lead me there. Oh, hurry, hurry, unknown shepherd of desires, and with thy flock of bright, imperishable fires, pen me within the starry fold, ere the night falls, and I am left alone below immutable walls. Or am I there already? And is it paradise to look on mortal things with an immortal's eyes. Above the misty brilliance, the streets assume a night-dilated blue magnificence of gloom. Like many-templed Nineveh, tower beyond tower, and I am hurried on in this 
immortal hour. Mine eyes beget new majesties, my spirit greets the trams, the high-built glittering galleons of the streets that float through twilight rivers from galaxies of light. Nay, in the fount of days they rise, they take their flight, and wend to the great deep, the holy sepulchre. Those dark, misshapen folk, to be made lovely there. Hurry with me, not all ignoble as we seem, lured by some inexpressible and gorgeous dream. The earth melts in my blood. The air that I inhale is like enchanted wine poured from the holy grail. What was that glimmer then? Was it the flash of wings as through the blinded mart rode on the king of kings? Oh, stay, departing glory, stay with us but a day, and burning seraphim shall leap from out our clay, and plumed and crested hosts shall shine where men have been. Heaven hold no lordlier court than earth at College Green. Ah, no, the wizardry is over. The magic flame that might have melted all in beauty fades as it came. The stars are far and faint and strange. The night draws down, exiled from light, forlorn, I walk in Dublin town. Yet, had I might to lift the veil, the will to the, yet, yet had I might to lift the veil, the will to dare, the fiery rushing chariots of the Lord are there. The whirlwind path, the blazing gates, the trumpets blown, the halls of heaven, the majesty of throne by throne, enraptured faces, hands uplifted, welcome sung by the thronged gods, tall, golden colored, joyful, young. The Man to the Angel I have wept a million tears. Pure and proud one, where are thine? What the gain though all thy years in unbroken beauty shine? All your beauty cannot win. Truth we learn in pain and sighs. You can never enter in to the circle of the wise. They are but slaves of light who have never known the gloom. And between the dark and light willed in freedom their own doom. Think not in your pureness there that our pain but follows sin. There are fires for those who dare seek the throne of might to win. Pure one, from your pride refrain, dark and lost amid the strife. I am myriad years of pain nearer to the fount of life. When defiance fierce is thrown at the God to whom you bow, Rest the lips of the unknown, tenderest upon my brow. The Free They bathed 
in the fire-flooded fountains. Life girdled them round and about. They slept in the clefts of the mountains. The stars called them forth with a shout. They prayed, but their worship was only the wonder at nights and at days, as still as the lips of the lonely, though burning with dumbness of praise. No sadness of earth ever captured their spirits who bowed at the shrine. They fled to the lonely enraptured and hid in the darkness divine. As children of twilight may gather, they met at the doorway of death, the smile of the dark hidden father, the mother with magical breath. Untold of in song or in story, in days long forgotten of men, their eyes were yet blind with a glory time will not remember again. Oversoul, Oversoul. The east was crowned with snow-cold bloom and hung with veils of pearly fleece. They died away into the gloom, vistas of peace and deeper peace. And earth and air and wave and fire in awe and breathless silence stood for one who passed into their choir, linked them in mystic brotherhood. Twilight of amethyst, amid thy few strange stars that lit the heights, where was the secret spirit hid? Where was thy place O light of lights, the flame of beauty far in space, where rose the fire, in thee, in me, which bowed the elemental race to adoration silently. The Unknown God. Far up the dim twilight fluttered, moth wings of vapor and flame. The lights danced over the mountains, star after star they came. The lights grew thicker, unheeded, for silent and still were we. Our hearts were drunk with a beauty our eyes could never see. Babylon. The blue dusk ran between the streets. My love was winged within my mind. It left today and yesterday and thrice a thousand years behind. Today was past and dead for me, for from today my feet had run through thrice a thousand years to walk the ways of ancient Babylon. Today was past and dead for me, for from today my feet had run through thrice a thousand years to walk the ways of ancient Babylon. On temple top and palace roof, the burnished gold flung back the rays of a red sunset that was dead and lost beyond a million days. The tower of heaven turns darker blue. A starry sparkle now begins. The mystery and magnificence, the myriad beauty and the sins come back to me. I walk beneath the shadowy multitude of towers. Within the gloom, the fountain jets its pallid mist in lily flowers. 
the waters lull me, and the scent of many gardens, and I hear familiar voices, and the voice I love is whispering in my ear. Oh, real as in dream all this, and then a hand on mine is laid, the wave of phantom time withdraws. And that young Babylonian maid, one drop of beauty left behind from all the flowing of that tide, is looking with the self-same eyes and here in Ireland by my side. O oh, light our life in Babylon, but Babylon has taken wings while we are in the calm and proud procession of eternal things. <laughs>